Good morning and welcome to this month's Oakcrest Insight. Now, you've heard me say this many times, right? Don't look at your accounts every day or try not to anyways, or don't watch what the markets do every day. Well, in November, if you listen to that advice, you may have missed that we had one of the best days in the markets with the S&P up 5.54% in one day. Or here in January, the markets were up over 6%. Now, when we look at investing, we typically talk about returns over a longer period of time, right? Six months, 12 months, a few years. But what happens more in between those years or those time periods to get those returns? Now, there are years where the markets seem to just go up and up without much really downside, right? Those are years we enjoy. And then you have years like last year. The markets are down, then they're up, then they're down, then they're up. So one of the hardest parts for investing is timing the market twice. What do I mean by that? I mean, knowing when to get out first before it gets bad and when the markets will recover is the most difficult thing to predict. So as many of you have heard me say, or kind of talk over the last six, nine, 12 months, the markets can recover quickly before investors start reacting. Now, one of those days was November 10th. So leading up to this, there was a lot of concern, right? Which is very normal. With inflation going higher, you had interest rates higher. But on November 10th, inflation data came out much better than expected. And the markets, which I was very happy with and been waiting for, reacted positively. Like I said, the market's up 5.54% in the S&P in one day. Now, in one day, the markets return what sometimes it takes a year to produce. So I asked our investment team here to kind of look more into this so we could talk about it and give you some information on this. And next is a graph of the best one-day returns from 2002 to 2022 here in March. Now, when you see this chart, you might think these are yearly returns we're showing, but these are actually day returns for the S&P 500. Now, if you look at it, there's a little bit of a pattern, right? If you look closely, the market's worst days tend to be followed by the best days. And we often feel like we can take more control of our investments, right? Or the markets by selling out, being more conservative. But then we lock in losses and we potentially miss out on some of those best days shortly after. So the same can be said, right, for the bigger picture as we think about the markets. The worst month or years tend to be followed by some of the best months or the best years after a downturn. Now, another chart my team found here when we were looking at this was what happens if you miss out on not only the one day, but the 10 best days. So here's a chart of the last 30 years in the S&P from September 1st, 92 to August 31st here of 2022. Now, the average return during those 30 years was 7.8% if you just stayed invested. So what happens if during those 30 years, you just weren't invested for the 10 best days? Your return goes down 2.72% on average over those 30 years. Doesn't seem like a lot, Ryan, right? But over 30 years, it is. Averaging close to 5% versus almost 8%. Now, we understand investing can get difficult sometimes, and our emotions are hard to manage. But that's our job, right? That's our job to be here to help with those emotions, help you make decisions as you move forward into 2023 with your investing goals in mind. Now, that's what we're here for, right? We know there's a lot of concerns and really, especially reasons to be concerned short term. So feel free to reach out to us. Use us when you feel this way. So, and that's why we really want to keep you posted, right, on what we're hearing on these monthly insight videos or our quarterly insight webinars. Try to join if you can or listen to them because they, they're for you to be helpful. We look forward to seeing you next month on Oakcrest Insight.